Okay, I'm Bob Madsen, and I'm the regional manager for uh, Southeast Alaska for ADEC's Spill Prevention and Response Division's new program, the Preparedness Prevention and Response Program. I'm on board today because the state has these ETS systems spread out throughout the state, but there's two of the large systems based here in Southeast, and uh, I wanted to be here to get familiar uh, with the actual towing. Use of them. I'm Lieutenant Commander Michael Newell. I'm the commanding officer of the Coast Guard Cutter Maple. Today was a great show of partnering and of the state, the federal government, and the Canadian Coast Guard in exercising an emergency tow system where, in any type of weather, a helo can drop this tow system to a vessel that's disabled or in distress. They can rig up their end and then pass that to another vessel that would be able to tow them to a, either a safe anchorage or tow them into a port. It's a training for all of the buoy tender crews that are here. We've got riders with us from the other five ships, the Canadian Coast Guard. They were with us on this exercise, so it was good training for them as well. This is the first time the Canadians have had an opportunity to handle this system. Uh, it, it's actually fairly simple. The components are a big tow line, a messenger line, and some uh, buoys that, and a sea anchor where you can float the messenger line to, uh, to the ship, either the ship that's going to tow it or the ship that is in need of being towed. It can be deployed from either either vessel. And it's, that's pretty much it in a cargo net and a cage, and it, the, whole, the whole system can be slung load by helicopter, by a large helicopter. We stand a search and rescue guard, the buoy tenders do, in the state of Alaska, in the District 17. So if there's a vessel in distress or a vessel that is adrift that needs to get towed, and they can drop this system to that vessel, we can show up. So having familiarity with the, what we're using is really key. You don't want to be seeing something for the first time when the seas are rough and the wind's blowing, and chances are it's going to be dark because Everything bad always happens in the dark. The genesis of the system was out in uh, Unalaska to sell an AU, which was a, a cargo ship that held a cargo of soybeans. Lost power in the engines. They were unable to regain power. Tows uh, failed through lack of uh, the proper, proper tow lines. And it ended up on the beach. Uh, we had a large black oil spill out there for a number of for a number of years for the cleanup. Three months after the Selendang went on the rocks, in Unalaska Bay, another ship also began dragging anchor and it almost went aground. So the mayor of Unalaska uh, formed, she brought together a bunch of partners and formed a group that ultimately became the, the emergency tow system work group. Came up with a design, a plan, and out of that, City of Alaska got one medium size, and the state of Alaska through DEC uh, built one of the larger size. The larger size handles ships in excess of 50,000 deadweight tons, and the medium uh, system will work up to 50,000 deadweight tons. We have, I believe, seven large packages and three mediums. The three mediums are in Alaska, Coal Bay, and Nome and the large systems are in Ketchikan, Sitka, Kodiak S2, Anchorage, uh, Unalaska, and ADAC. Basically, we're trying to cover the North Gulf Coast. A lot of the, the vessels we're looking at, some of our problems are vessels that are, that are actually not stopping in Alaskan waters, uh, but are in the Great Circle route, running from the West Coast to Asia. In 2010, in fact, the uh, the first use of the system was made under actual conditions when the Golden Seas lost power in the Bering Sea and the system from uh, Unalaska uh, was sent out and was used to tow her back to port safely. 